A change in leadership at Starbucks is calling into question the company's handling of efforts among many of its employees at some branches to unionize. Yahoo Finance's Danny Romero is here with more on the ongoing story. Danny, uh, the latest updates I understand are coming from a store in Phoenix, Arizona, attempting to unionize. What's the latest? Yeah, Brian, the battle is definitely brewing up between Starbucks baristas and Starbucks. For the first time in the Starbucks Workers Union campaign, the National Labor Relations Board found that the company had allegedly taken illegal moves in in, um, in, in in its fight against the union. Some of the alleged accusations include retaliation against workers who wanted to organize. In a formal complaint, the NLRB found that the company had allegedly fired one worker while suspending another worker for their want to organize. The complaint states that the first employee, Dayla Dalton, was allegedly suspended and disciplined for raising concerns around wages and hours and under understaffed, um, insufficient staffing, as well as at her store on behalf of her co-workers. The retaliation was allegedly intended to discourage other employees from coming forward. That's what the NLRB's regional director wrote in a formal complaint, adding that the company's actions against Dalton shows allegedly it had been interfering with and restraining and coercing employees in the exercise of the rights guaranteed by federal labor laws. The next step will be if a judge finds and can confirm the labor board's allegations to be true, then Starbucks will have to hold meetings, also post notices and give employees the right to to um, unionize as well. And so it also will, ha will have to reimburse the second worker that was allegedly fired. Uh, we spoke with one shift manager from that store and here's what he had to say about it. The first step in holding Starbucks accountable for their union busting tactics and retaliation tactics against Starbucks workers. So I, I'm happy. It's sad that this had to happen you know, I mean, we work for Starbucks. I love Starbucks. We all love Starbucks. That's, that's why we stay at the company. Um, and it's sad that the, that the company is not living by its values. But, um, you know, I, it had to happen. This had to happen so that Starbucks can be held accountable. And you can hear right there that they really just want Starbucks to be held accountable. Accountable. So we also reached out to Starbucks and they sent us this part, this statement that reads in part, a partner's interest in the union does not exempt them from the standards we have always held. We will continue to enforce our policies consistently for all partners and we will follow the NLRB, NLRB's process to resolve this complaint. Claims of anti-union activity in this case are categorically False. That's what a Starbucks spokesperson told us in a phone interview. Now, meanwhile, the complaint just came one day before CEO Kevin Johnson announced that he would be stepping down and that uh, former CEO Howard Schultz would be stepping in as interim CEO. Starbucks made it very clear that Johnson had signaled to its board of directors about his retirement. And so aside from that, Starbucks will have until March March 29th to uh, respond to this complaint. Brian? Yeah, and certainly an issue for uh, Howard Schultz, who will be taking over as interim CEO again with Kevin Johnson leaving there. I want to just quickly ask about Disney. Uh, they are also standing up against their employer for a different reason, concerns over the so-called don't say gay bill uh, in Florida. I want to read you a quick statement that Disney put out this morning. This is coming from their parks division. They said, quote, the company will not stand for discrimination in any form. And then added that, quote, uh, they will oppose any legislation that infringes on basic human rights. So, Danny, it sounds like uh, Disney doing a little bit of a policy uh, stance change here. What do you see on that front? Yeah, at a virtual meeting yesterday, CEO of Disney, Bob Chapek, uh, acknowledged missteps and announced new plans to help address employee frustration. Ch Chapek said that he wanted to use this moment as a catalyst for meaningful change. In addition to working with those in fighting the Florida bill and pausing donations in Florida, he announced three new steps the company is taking. Chapek is going on a listening tour to hear employee concerns 
brands around the wor world. He announced a new company-wide task force to develop strategy and concrete actions to engage LGBTQ plus employees and creators to be a force of good for those um, communities with a special focus in developing more LGBTQ plus content. He also revealed that the company has signed a human rights campaign opposing the Texas policy that criminalizes parents providing gender affirming care for transgender minors. Now, these moves address many of the demands of the group that um, organized the wa walkout that is scheduled for this morning. So it really showcases how receptive uh, CEOs are now um, at stage, you know, there was a recent poll from the 2022 uh, Edelman Trust Barometer that shows that the majority of people accept uh, CEOs want, excuse me, want CEOs to speak out on co controversial issues and topics. Brian. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Yahoo Finance's Daniel Romero, thanks so much for the breakdown on those two very big names in the American consumer economy. Appreciate it.